what are we up to today? Well, this is a really big video, and I'll be honest with you, it's not even finished yet. It's just getting so huge that uh, I'm, this is going to be a multi-part video, and it's going to be some long multi-parts. So, as you may have guessed, I'm making a GPS-assisted ionizing radiation survey meter. Well, the idea behind this is that I can drive around, and it can measure radiation, and match it to a GPS point. Um, but I've had a whole bunch of delays and lots of stuff go wrong. There's a lot of little details in here. Um, how this project started was I, I have picked up an interest um, through uh, an associate of mine who um, was at Maralinga during uh, the nuclear test, or at least some of them. Um, some nuclear tests in Australia that contaminated most of Australia to, to varying degrees. Um, the majority of that was with strontium-90 that got picked up into the, um, into the milk of grazing cattle. And this was a time when the government was guaranteeing a half pint of milk per child per day. Um, and of course, strontium-90 replaces calcium, gets taken up in milk, and then gets concentrated in bones. There's a lot more about that. Uh, I'll post a link um, to a documentary that fills you in with more details around that. Anyway, the upshot of this is uh, there were a lot of things that, uh, that went on surrounding that that were heavily covered up, including the level of contamination that was extreme in some places. Um, and there were contaminated aircraft that were cut up and buried, and um, apparently uh, a couple that flew through the cloud of one, or the, the fallout cloud from one of the tests, and were later buried somewhere near where I live. Um, now, I happen to have access to that area until about December, so uh, my chance is to uh, build one of this before the end of the year and go and see if there's anything to those rumours. If, of course, there is, the plan is to go and notify the relevant authorities and the landowners and, uh, you know, the, the people that are involved where I'm scanning. I'm being a little secretive around this for a number of reasons, but uh, I'll go into that at a later date. Um, but... Safest to say, if I don't find anything, I'm going to scrub these records and move on. And uh, I may even sometime in the future find a, a way to get to Maralinga. Although, again, I'm poor, that may or may not happen. In any case, there's a whole bunch of reasons why I want this to work. Uh, this video is mostly centred around the build and the intricacies of that. So uh, I'll take you back to the normal scheduled intro that was intended to start this video. Um, I now have well over 30 gigabytes of video... Um, and clips all saved up about this. Um, so this could be a long video, and this might only just be part one. Um, I'm still probably about three or four weeks uh, weeks away from completing this uh, because I'm waiting on parts to arrive. So I'll take you back to our normal scheduled programming. Bleh. Take you back to our normal scheduled programming. I'm not going to cut that. <laughs> I haven't got the time or the energy. Uh, but yes, keep that in mind when things don't quite stack up at the end of this video. This is just part one, there's more coming. Okay, the first part of this next project has arrived. Um, I'll give you some backstory in a minute, but I've been on PCB Way, as you might guess. Unfortunately, they're not yet sponsors of mine. I'd really like them to be, because their stuff's good. But, yeah, we've got to get a whole bunch of you guys, uh, liking this under the terms of their agreement. I think 500 of you have got to like the video or something like that. I'll figure that out later. For now, I've got Geiger counters to build. Right, well, I'm just starting to get a few components laid out and to work out what I have and what I don't have. The first thing that occurs to me is this little X1 here, and I assume that's the crystal. So I've gone up to my assembly diagram and noticed it needs to be an eight megahertz crystal. So, we had a look in here and I went, oh yay, I've got crystals. They're all good, and, um, oh dear, they are 16 megahertz crystals. Twice as fast, which I'm pretty sure that 18 mega will probably run okay on, or an AT Titan will probably okay, run okay at 16 megahertz, but all the counts and everything will be screwy. So, I'm going to have to get an 8 megahertz crystal. That's fine. Um... These are triple five timer chips, and I made sure I didn't have them confused with the AT Tiny 
uh, 85 chips which I do have in that same box I should probably label them <clears throat> so and I have two AT tiny 2312s um, I was a bit confused before I thought this called for an AT mega which I have in this box is an AT mega right in there beside the read switches and naturally I have maybe enough LEDs to complete the job um, I don't need super capacitors I might need an LM7805 up in there and at least two of these capacitors are the right value um, I have some pin headers and I have some piggyback pin headers which I'll be using for a modification of my own um, I've got a voltmeter to keep an eye on battery volts um, I've got some DC plugs I'm going to use a nice snazzy bezeled LED for this one um, for added authenticity because they look real sexy when you do stuff like that um, yeah and I've got a big assortment of resistors none of which are the correct ones um, nor the ceramic capacitors or polyesters whatever they call for here um, I do have a piezo beeper that is a piezo speaker I'm not sure if it calls for a beeper or a speaker here we'll figure that out um, oh no that's a capacitor that's the beeper I can fit a few different styles on there I'll find something um, but for the most part, oh, and I've got a couple of tactile switches that'll do, uh, Q2 is probably something like, um, uh, an NPN or a PNP, probably, uh, 2N3904, hmm. I would have thought it might have been a BC548 or something, and there's an FJN3303F, I don't know those ones, I've seen the 2N3904 before, but I don't know anything about its specs, this part number, never seen it before. Gonna have to look that up. Uh, the one in 4937, um, yeah, I'm not sure of the specs on that, but I have some uh, 4007s and some uh, 4004s, so 700 volts is not enough for that. Uh, the one in 914 here can also be substituted for a 4007 without too much of a problem. Um, so that's all pretty good and considering this is driven from 400 volts I'm thinking a 700 volt diode might be kind of handy but that also might have some current specs that I'm not aware of so yeah I'll go over assembling this um, but yeah this is a bit up the top here this bit here is what I'm most interested in is the pulse output um, nice clean pulses the Chinese boards uh, the more research I do in them the more I see people making interpreter boards that have to clean up the outputted signal. It's just not quite palatable for something like a Raspberry Pi. So at least with this, with the AT Tiny, um, I have the source code. I can alter the output as I need and slow it down, speed it up. If I really wanted to, I could probably stick a, a little um, OLED display or something on this serial interface and actually have it give me a count. Um, anyway, there's lots of options with this board. It's been built a little bit more intelligently than um, some of the Chinese boards, which still do use an AT Tiny 85 on them. They could have done a lot more with it than just make it go beep. So, yeah. So there's a few things I've got to look up here. Um, but, yeah, that 8 megahertz crystal is certainly something I'm going to have to find. Um, but, yeah, I might do some homework. I might even be able to alter the code to handle the 16 megahertz crystal and just like half a multiplier or I'll have to look into how it's actually written so um, yeah so the next thing is to go through the assembly instructions which I think most of this is a bit of a no-brainer for somebody like myself I put together plenty of kits I think I'm not strictly sure about I'll uh, look it up but yeah um, I'll try and post links to the sources for all this but uh, if you find the uh, mighty ohm um, Geiger counter board on PCB way you'll also find that he's uh, linked you to all the source material as well um, yeah and this little bit here uh, I'm well aware of that with sensitive tubes don't be forceful with them definitely definitely good advice so yeah uh, and also uh, where he's bolded slowly adjust the voltage yes very good idea um, all right so yeah, I've got to go order a bunch more parts and uh, I've got to check my email for a quote. I was uh, should have been sent from Jcar with a list of the parts that I needed. So I'll see what he's found for me. All right, well, I've been to my local Jcar store and they'd been a little bit slow in getting the parts in that I needed, but they had these. So this is a start. And I think 
these might substitute for Geiger counter tube clips, we'll see. Now, uh, now that I've finished yawning on camera, um, I'm going to write down all the part numbers on all these, like, you know, the RG510. I'm going to write all the J-Car part numbers down on a big long list, and hopefully make an order list so that next time I go to J-Car I can go, right, I need five or I need ten lots of these. And give them just a sheet with all the part numbers they can just punch into the system and make the order. Uh, I also forgot chip sockets. Now, crucially, um, I really am going to need a 20-pin chip socket uh, for at least the AT Tiny uh, in case I don't get the programming right. Well, it looks like an electronic echidna just uh, exploded on my bench. But uh, we've got the components we have so far are assembled. Uh, less the chips, of course. Although I think it's pretty safe if I solder a triple five onto the board. I don't think I ever recall having a triple five blow up. So I might fit that onto the board uh, right now. That's the triple fives in, and uh, first time I used that microscope, um, I wonder if it'll actually record okay. It's actually a bit of a pain when you're doing big stuff, um, but it should give a nice close-up view of the soldering process, just, I don't know, because it's interesting. Anyway, um, this is about all I can do. I'm pretty well running out of parts. I need to wait for a chip socket for these things. Um, no Geiger tubes are here yet. I haven't got battery packs. There's a few resistors I don't have. Don't have any of the transistors. I could probably put a couple of LEDs in. You know what? I might do that. What LED colors do I have? 
um, a few. I think I've got a lot of these blue ones and they're actually quite bright and noticeable and I want something that's not the same color as all my other instruments because I want blue for something unusual. Radiation being unusual. Let's put them in. Okay, two blue LEDs later. All right, um, I'm not sure if this calls for a PZO speaker or a PZO beeper. Um, I think I have both, but I have a tactile switch. I can test that. Um, right, the switch test complete, I guess. Well, I'm gonna have to sit on this for a bit until new parts arrive. So through the magic of video, you should see them somewhere about now. Okay, a crucial part of this project has just arrived. Um, this is supposedly an untested tube uh, that I got at slightly cheaper prices. And we've got some Ukrainian classified ads. I'm going to have to uh, get the Google Translate ad on that. Anyway, here is our SBM20 tube that I'm going to be very gentle with. Um, it's the first time I've actually hold, held one of these in my hand. I'm told they're quite fragile. So here is our tube. Um, these were listed as dinted and indeed there are some little dints like right about here. Um, but other than that they look like it's in fairly good condition. There is a glass tube inside that we need to be careful of. So I need to test this before I really give him positive feedback. Um, so that's what I'm about to do. So we will roll this up. You can hear my apprentice in the background is having some fun as well in the workshop today. So I'll put this over here. Now, here's the crucial bit that I haven't wanted to do until I had another tube. This is my current Geiger counter, which also uses an SPM20. We can, it's had a bit of life, this one. We can see the tube through the side here. So I'm planning on opening this and swapping the tubes out to see if the new one functions. And for testing, I have some americium from a smoke alarm here um, in the uh, ionization chamber. Now, guys probably don't do this, although alpha particles are not that bad. Um, we're going to fire this up and make sure our existing one still works. So let's put this near our tube. Actually, let's see which side our tube was on again. I think the other side. So if we put this over here, we'll hear it start to go count increase, considering the background level here is about um, 0.12 micro sieverts. That's considerably above background level. All right, so we know that tube works. So let's crack this open. And this is the nerve wracking bit for me uh, because this is like a $250 piece of equipment. Before I do much else, I'm going to clean. This is Blue Tech. I've had it stuck to my dash as I drive around, and some of the Blue Tech has been left behind. I might clean that up later, actually. Now I'm going to take a spudger tool here, and we'll rotate you around and see if I can pop this open. Um, there aren't any screws to speak of, and that's the tube side. Let's start opposite the tube in case I do something silly like bust the tube. All right, that is going to pop open. That's nice. My apprentice is missing the TV because I muted it to record this. So, all right, this is going to take a bit of time. Let's jump back to uh, when I've got this open and after I've sworn when I bust the tube. Okay, I think I've cracked this open. There was some glue on here. So let's just very carefully check this is, I need to, my language goes a little bit up the creek when I'm doing this because my priority is on getting this right. There's a bit of glue left in the base here, but I think we should be able to swing the board away. Here we go. All right. So that looks like a different type of SPM20 um, and it's wire wrapped on there, but we should still be able to test this. And we can see here at the end of the, the tube, uh, the glass tube poking out there. So that's to some degree what will be inside the tube that we already have. Um, 
just without the end caps. So I'm fairly nervous. This does have soldered on straps on the side there. So I don't know if I really want to separate this off the board. The first thing I will do is note the polarity of the battery there. I'm going to uh, make a mark on there to help indicate that. Now, um, there's a little arrow on here and we will put a mark on the board on that side and a mark on that cable there. That way we know that's the negative wire. All right, or at least it's that wire. So it goes back on the same way. And this, if we're really careful here, we want to be really careful of the nipple on the end of that tube. Um, I do not want to bust that. And I'm already having to put a little bit of force on this. So let's just be super careful there. All right. So there's a beeper and our inverter coil and all the rest in here. Hmm. It might be that I leave that in situ and I just disconnect this wire wrap terminal here. And... Um, from there, I can uh, just make a, a clip lead connection to the other tube. I'm going to do a bit of experimenting and we'll be back. see here under the microscope um, after you've just seen the cutscene from here this is what we've done we've managed to take off this wire wrapping off the end now to attach the uh, now to attach the other Geiger tube now before I go too much further I want to confirm I've got polarity correct now from what I've researched this is still fairly new into dealing with this kind of things I understand the concept well but the actual execution is something I haven't done a lot of. So I'm using 9 volts here through my continuity beeper. Uh, and what I'm seeking to determine is that the negative electrode is connected to the shield. Um, so let's try that here. It seems to be correct. And it's not the case of the positive. Okay, so now I have that baseline. I'm pretty sure over on the actual Geiger counter here that um, this electrode is going to be positive which is indeed correct which means that's our negative so that's our positive electrode all right so we now know and uh, we now know what the polarity is so you can see here on this um, there's a little plus symbol here to indicate the positive end i've just clarified that with a plus and minus symbol to indicate positive and negative so we can safely assume that this orientation and I'm being gentle with this this orientation is correct we have our hot wire here and we have our ground we can take from there so now I need a couple of clip leads to hook all this up so we have everything sort of laid out here we have our positive from our hot wire we've detached over to here and then negative back onto the ground there now we need to add some power 
to the circuit here. Now this will run on just one of these batteries, but we're going to add two just in case. I'll lay that down well out of the way. Now there's a big fat button on the bottom here. Now I need to figure out how to do this without making a 400 volt circuit through myself, which means it's a little tricky. So, okay. It's fired up and it seems to be detecting radiation. Let's check over here with this. Aha, good. So, not to be confused with that tube. So the SPM20 is detecting particles from americium. We're doing good. The tube works. I'm super excited. I think I think that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of the stuff that I picked up today. I'm going to take a couple of pineapples here. And I'm going to go to that cellar and I'm going to get a few more of them. I'm really, really happy. I don't know if you can tell the excitement in my voice, but... I was really nervous that I'd wasted all my money on this endeavour. That tube works. Now, the disappointment that awaits is when I put this wire wrap back on, if it's still going to work. Uh, because I'm told it's a pretty risky practice to solder onto the end of these, so we'll see what happens. Alright, I'm happy. I want to check just again to make sure. Alright, that's good. Probably not quite tuned strictly correctly for that tube, but it proves the tube works. That's very good.